In this world, nightmares lurk. They hide in our neighborhoods, walk our streets, wear our faces. But they are not us. They are the world's best kept secret. And we are going to find them. Welcome to Uncanny Valley Cancer Cell. Hello everyone and welcome. This is a Chronicles of Darkness tabletop campaign played in the Hunter the Vigil storyteller system. Can I have died in the last fight? <laughs> you want, you want to retcon your death? <laughs> Charlie! He's alive! Mike just doesn't want to hang out with us anymore. That's the real reason. We left all of you driving away from the scene of your final confrontation with the group of vampires that you found in the Research Institute underneath the Insane Asylum in Manascus, Nebraska. Now you all have an opportunity to wrap up your loose ends before you move on and get ready to film your next episode. <laughs> Wait, so, was it Nebraska? Was it Nebraska or for uh, Arkansas? We've been we were in, it. We were in Nebraska. <laughs> Why okay. the fuck can't we? Any of us remember we were what state we were in? Was it Tennessee? <laughs> It was definitely Nebraska. It was Walmart, Tennessee, don't you know? So, trundling along the way uh, back towards town, it is something of a drive. Most of you veg out, you know, you pull out your cell phones or stare out the window. But, Vic, you really could use some time alone. So, uh, you find a quiet place at the back of the van. and He clears out uh, the, the entire, you know, like how there's like a back bedroom at the back of a tour van? Yeah, you guys have sort of a, a bunk room in the back that has yeah. four bunks. Is, is it, would anyone be there in the back? Five bunks. There yeah, are there are more. two. <laughs> there are two on the side in the common room that just have like curtains. Okay. And then in the back is a set of four with the door. Okay. I, I didn't sleep well last night, so I'd want to be taking a nap on the way back. Okay. It, are you a heavy sleeper? In, in real life, yes. I don't know about my character. That's up to this one. It's a high low. Go ahead. It's your, your character, Hi. you decide. Yeah, you're cool. High. Oh, high is high I is love heavy. starting high lows. High is heavy. <laughs> I'm a light sleeper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the the door makes that makes that crunk uh, sound as it opens, and Vic, Vic comes in just like, oh, mm. sorry, I didn't know you were here. Mm. All right, I, I roll I roll back over and I hey, try as to long as you're you. as long as you're awake, can can you like, get, I, I I just need a second alone. I have to make a phone call. I put on some earbuds and I roll back over. <laughs> Seeing as that's acceptable, uh, uh, Vic uh, just sits down on one of the bunks and it's uh, yeah. He does that. He just sits on one of the bunks and uh, takes the out his earbuds and plugs the phone. <laughs> oh, okay. You're I didn't realize great. that we were allowed to be total fuckers on this game. <laughs> You don't know that being a total fucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't we realize we were using total fucker rules. And I pull a blanket over. I pull a blanket over my torso. <laughs> okay. Uh, Vic pulls. Uh, Vic pulls out uh, uh, his phone and he scrolls down his contact list until he gets to the name Tori Thatcher, uh, and he hits call on it and brings it up to his ear. Hello. Tori, hey, it's Vic. <gasps> Vic, hi. Hey. How's it going? It's going uh long day. We're just just filming a show right now. Oh yeah, you know, I, I get that. Was it was it you know, where were you? Where where are you at? What's going on? Uh we're in Nebraska or Tennessee or just something. I don't really remember. We're on the road. Oh, you poor son of a bitch. They put you in buff fuck nowhere, didn't they? They did. I mean it's it's middle America. I don't I don't know how much I can talk about NDAs, but it's like Ghost hunting and everything, and uh, eh, it's just ghost long. hunting. Huh? I never thought you would be on one of those shows. I hate it. I hate it so much. It's all bullshit. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm so sorry for you. I bet there's no air conditioning either, right? There's there's enough. Uh, they never <laughs> used to have it on my trailers. That's you know that was one of the things that just drove me nuts. Like, how hard is it to get a good window unit? Right. 
No, that, I mean, like, I know it's on, like, a trailer or something, so yeah, but so you have to take it off and on every time you move it. And then they like, never get your coffee order right. Never. Never <laughs> once. <laughs> Those little shows, right? You know, yeah. I they were fun. I kind of yeah. miss them. You do? You're not missing much. Tell me yeah. about Montana. How's the ranch? Oh, it's great. You know, we just got our uh, our cheese house open. And, uh, You're opening a cheese house? Yeah. You we, have a whole house for cheese. You, you didn't know we got goats? Um, and I didn't think that they'd like the climate, but they're doing really great. We just had a baby. Yeah, we named we named The goats them. did or you did? Uh, the, the, oh, <laughs> the goats. No. Okay. No, you no. You scared me. No, not me. Me and Jeb aren't having, aren't having kids just yet. But uh, yeah, we got a little Good. goat you, and we, we named him Curly. <laughs> keep that to figure. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm trying to keep it up, but it's it's not what it used to be. I mean, it's not like I'm going to be on camera anytime soon. But yeah, we just put our first batch in. We're making organic, free-range, artisanal goat cheese. And there's a local farmer's market. We just talked to the man that organized it. And, he, you know, he was so encouraging. I thought that the local farmers would, like, not like us moving into the market. But, oh my gosh, it's just like this little community. And everyone is just so... I don't know. It's just so great. You're uh, you're living the dream. <laughs> Stop. No, you're living the dream. You have your own show. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's not as glamorous as you think. Well, sure. But, you know, you go home at the end of the night and, you know, you feel like, wow, I'm, I'm doing stuff. People are going to see me. And I mean, I, I, I don't miss it per se, but you do get a real sense of purpose, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I do. Oh, hey, uh, oh gosh. Oh gosh. Don't eat that. Don't, no, no. Sorry. I need to go. Okay. All right. Uh, take care of yourself. I'll call you back. Okay. Please do. And you know, Vic, hmm? you know, when it gets hard, just remember hmm? we started this together and if anything ever gets too bad or too rough, you know, I'm there for you. You can come here to the ranch anytime you need and uh, we'll end this together. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. So Vic hangs up. That was sweet. Did I, I, I have the feels. Is that in character? <laughs> is that in character? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were farting too. Yeah, I thought <laughs> it was a fart. <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, Vic, uh, Vic, Vic puts down the phone. Uh, kind of like there's like a little bit of wetness in one of the uh, yeah, one of his right. eyes. He wipes it and just uh, and at which point he uh, gets up and. Just like double checks uh, over back at Mason, just to see if he's uh, if anything's different. Uh, I covered myself in a blanket, and then I'm facing away from you. But you heard all of that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. At which point he uh, he opens the door just a little too loudly again. Shh. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, then and then Mason leave. cries. <laughs> and then leaves. I grumble and throw the rest of the blanket over my head. <laughs> Camera pans down. He's got tears. <laughs> <laughs> So that was our first uh, interaction, aside from Charlie, no. with a touchstone. Touchstones in Hunter mm. are meant to be positive relationships that mm. characters have with non-combatants, uh, with people who are not allies or contacts. They don't get anything concrete from them. They just seem to anchor a person in the world and remind them of why they are doing the things that they're doing. So that is who uh, Tori Thatcher is to Vic. Oh. She's uh, a, ser- a person who shared his earliest experiences in the industry mm. and who was always there to remind him why he is in a tour bus in the middle of bumfuck <laughs> nowhere, sweating his ass off. <laughs> <laughs> and for that conversation, please take a willpower. Ooh, uh, well, I, I have not expended any this entire game. <laughs> so. All right. Well, it was, you know, uh, go ahead and just give yourself a temporary willpower. Dot. Sure, that'll work. Uh, and so then. Let's see. We we will move back and we'll follow him cinematically back into the main apartment of the tour bus. And uh, there we will find Darla and JD and Wolf. What are you all up to? Hey, what are you all up, what are you all up to? Nothing? Me too. <laughs> <laughs> he says as he's driving. <laughs> are, you, are you just are you doing that foot tap? <laughs> what do you mean? Are you just rocking your foot constantly, just like ready to get the fuck out of this town? Well, 
Nice. He's driving. I'm so driving. So hopefully we're not. We're having to drive back to town. Yeah. Driving. He's driving. Driving. Yeah, we're just uh, to the hospital. <laughs> Accelerating rather violently. Uh, <laughs> Darla is with one hand sort of fucking around her phone, you know. Browsing eBay, you know, setting up her account, <laughs> getting all the contact or like the like, like card bank account info in the right place. The other hand, she has a cigarette and she's like hanging out of the window smoking. <laughs> That's it. Wait a second. She smokes? Yeah, of course she does. Yeah. After all the shit you've given Wolf. Yeah, it's cigarettes, not illegal substances. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and give yourself a willpower dot back for indulging in a vice. Here. Both of them are vices. The money and the cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Wolf, what are you up to? So Wolf was driving the van originally, so I guess he was probably with the bus following for a while. Um, when we pull into town, I'm definitely going to go ahead and get William. Is Charlie with me or you guys? Charlie is following in his camper. He's not All right. with you. So I definitely got William still. I'm gonna pull. In, I'm gonna pull into McDonald's, get the boy something because he definitely earned it. Uh, Give myself wants, a Big Mac. He wants he wants a Big Mac with extra cheese and a chocolate shake. Definitely get him that. Eating light, I see. <laughs> well, he already ate like two hours ago. Okay. <laughs> it's, a, yeah. it's a werewolf di- diet just to be hungry again already. <laughs> and. Wolf's just a glutton. So he gets himself a Big Mac and a large Coke, and then he looks at William. Hey, uh, I know you gotta get back to your people real quick, but, uh, listen, I got someone in the hospital. You know them. Oh, is it that guy that I found? He nods. I've been so worried about him. Can we go? Are you saying you know where he is? I want to go visit him. Okay, well, you know, there's only one hospital in the area. He's probably there. Yeah, no questions. Uh, you know how to text? Uh, no. Okay, so Wolf is going to be a bad example, and he's going to text while driving, and he's going to shoot Mason. Uh, yeah, he'd, he'd shoot a text to Mason, like, hey, stop him by hospital, meet up with you guys in a minute. Okay. Right. I thought we were convening back in town and then going our separate ways. I mean, that maybe was the plan. Yeah. Wolf has, okay. has changed the plan. Like, I'll, I'll be like, meet back meet back at the apartments. We're splitting up from there. Other people wanted to go to the hospital, too. Blink. Blink. If we go back uh, to the motel, I had they're to, going to I had see to William. us. What's it say? Wait, what do you mean? If, they're going to, if we're going back to the motel, then they're going to see us. It's, They'll know that we left with the truck that we said we were taking right to uh, Kansas City uh, oh. and doubling back. Maybe we can just meet at the mm-hmm. hospital. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can't just meet at the hospital. Meet at the hospital, period. Send. All right. I, I've handed my phone to William. What's it say? It says, uh, you know, it's actually really confusing. <laughs> uh, well, the last one says meet at the hospital. Uh, okay. Thank you. I glance at my phone, make sure I don't have a bunch of growler updates, and <laughs> then uh, <laughs> shuffle back in my pants pocket. <laughs> All right, so you all make your way to the hospital. <laughs> it's very confusing. Uh, William. You wouldn't, you wouldn't read the text, but you'll check Growler. <laughs> <laughs> he has his priorities. Growler. Priorities. So uh, William, using his uh, local knowledge, will direct you quite handily to the Will and Mary Hospital in the nearby town of Winton, mm. Nebraska. You pull up. It's a very standard hospital. It's, you know, a small... A couple of wings, tall, blank face building with an emergency room drive up. And uh, there's a large parking lot. And even with the giant uh, tour bus, although it does attract some attention from the nurses at the nurse station, you do find a parking spot for all of you pretty easily. And you walk inside. Mm-hmm. Who's taking the lead here? Uh, guess Wolf. All right. So uh, you walk in, mm-hmm. there's a, a big sort of desk, a uh, high top desk with a glass uh, window and uh, several RNs uh, waiting to receive incomers like you. Uh, well, who else? It's just there's one group going there and the rest of us are taking off to take. Well, I right. wanted, I so wanted who, wants, who wants to see what happened to Henry? Well, I, I want to stay on the tour bus. I just wanted to take William and leave, but William wants to be here now. Oh, okay. So. 
I guess we're there. So now I'm waiting on William. <laughs> He's earned right. that much. I'll, I'll go in since we're there, I guess. Uh, hi, uh, what can, what can I help you with? Uh, yeah, hi. Um, I'm looking at... We ha- I- I'm with the production, and uh, with the one that just left. We had a guy who kind of got hurt on the job. I wanted to come check on him. Henry, uh... Mm, do you have a last name? She's sort of an elderly woman. She has deep-set wrinkles and wispy white hair and uh, no fucks to give whatsoever. It dawns on Wolf. He does not have a last name. <laughs> oh, uh, shoot. You could check your call sheet on your phone. Oh, yeah. Wolf takes out his phone and uh, ignores the, the growler hookups and uh, checks his call sheet. <laughs> He's so popular. He has hey, fame, this, too. This is Nebraska. There's probably only, like, three bears there. His last name is Henry Combe. He's 25 Combe. years old. Okay. Combe. Combe. Uh, Henry Combe. Combe. Mm. Combe. Ah, I've got him in the, uh, I've got him in the OR. Oh, no. He was there this morning. He's in recovery. Oh. Are you, are you next to Ken? Yes. <laughs> She she glares at you and makes a... Can I roll subterfuge? Yes, she glares at you and makes a perception check. Yes. <laughs> She's not that good, though. <laughs> I like the idea of somebody's next of kin not knowing their last name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Com- Combe. Yeah, I'm twice oh, removed. Shit. I'm his cousin, you know. Oh, shit. This, oh, shit. This RN just rolled three zeros. What? Oh, no. <laughs> well, three tens, I guess I yeah. should say. Okay, I'm burning a willpower on this one. Fuck three it. Three rerolls. <laughs> you gotta beat three. This lady's seen some shit. This she lady knows gets lied up. to a lot. <laughs> the mafia drops off their people at this hospital. No, I only got three. Oh, no. Uh, she likes at you up and down. And decides she doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh. She goes, well, obviously you care. No one else came for the poor boy, so... He's in 305, building B. <clears throat> she kind of gives you a very roundabout and very confusing line of instructions. And uh, you all find your way to his room quite easily. All right. So what do we find when we get there? Uh, well, not what you expected. <clears throat> you turn into the room and what you find is Henry uh, in a hospital gown and in a recovery bed. Uh, really earnestly watching The Price is Right and typing up a schedule on his laptop. <laughs> knock, knock. Uh, uh, come in? Uh, Wolf comes in. Hey, Henry. Oh, hi, it's you. <laughs> it's just so great to see you. Yeah, no, I just, uh, listen, after what happened, I... Wasn't sure what happened to you, and I want to make sure you were. Oh, you well, I'm I'm swell, you know. I just just lost my job, and now I'm sitting in a hospital room that I <laughs> don't have insurance for. Everything's fine. Oh Christ! Wait, they fired you? <laughs> you think this production is going to keep around a PA that can't work? Yes, they fired me. But uh, yes, I'm also still making the schedule because I mean. I just can't leave them hanging high and dry. They'll never work again. You totally can leave them high and dry. (sighs) You don't owe them shit. Well, I... It's just not right. They they shouldn't have fired me, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to finish my job. No, no, it's not right that I'm the only one to visit you. The person who comes after me doesn't deserve to pick up my mess. It's not your mess. Look, I'm not here to lecture you. I'm. Uh, um, do you know he, how long you're going to be in here? Maybe. His eyes flick from you over to William, and he goes, "Oh, good, my replacement. That explains <laughs> so much." He's not your replace. This is Will William. This is William. He's a friend of mine. That sounds weird. I'm in my thirties. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you don't, he, he's not your replacement. Is there anything I can do for you? Like. (sighs) 
Did you see anything weird that night? Yeah, I did. Like how did you? weird? Because I'm I I'm pretty sure I had a psychotic break. So I I'm just gonna stay in this hotel room or in this this sorry. <laughs> I'm just gonna stay in this hospital room until I'm pretty sure that I'm not gonna go like I don't know axe murder somebody or something because I just saw some weird crazy shit and I have never had an ounce of mental health education in my life. I went to public school. I am not prepared for this. Well, two good things. One, I did see some weird shit that night. And two, I'm a psychiatrist. <sighs> An actual one. I don't just play one on TV. Henry tur- mutes the TV on The Price is Right, <laughs> closes his laptop, and he goes, <sighs> Okay. So it all started when I was five. I'm going to walk in and pull Will out. <laughs> uh, while you're walking him out, I look to you and I kind of motion, get the door, will you? Yeah, yeah, close the door. I'm going to be like, get well, Henry, and I'm going to go sit down in the lobby and wait for Wolf to come out. I, I imagine Watch that happening is right out there. slowly. We're just like, the hand comes in and it's like, yoink. So we'll go, we'll go watch Price is Right in the lobby. <sighs> So it all started when I was five years old, and my mother well, put me over her knee. And we can take Will. Put me over her knee, and she smacked me on the bottom three times. And he relays for you a very uneventful life story. And Wolf, just make sure this kid feels like he's being listened to right now. After a very meandering and not very focused life story, where he relays all of his first world problems. Uh, Henry finally comes to that night, and at this point he is crying like a baby, and he goes, and when that thing walked out of that hallway and it just stood over me, and Mason was just on the, on, on, on the walkie, and I just wanted him to shut up because this thing was looking at me, and the, the radio is what brought it there, and I just remembered my mother looking down at me when I was little, and I just, I just blanked, I just panicked. I don't know what happened, but then I woke up here, and I had this horrible gash, and he holds up his arm that has a band-aid on it, (laughs) (laughs) and I just didn't know what happened. Well, should I roll, like, medicine or something here? Uh, What are you, what, what do you want to say or do to him? Basically, I want to give him the most, like... What you experienced was valid and real and you're okay, sort of like pep talk a doctor could give you. Okay, then I would say either expression to sort of <laughs> empathize with him, or you could do Bless it you, as <laughs> or you could do it as a um I'm oh, sorry, empathy to sort of appeal to his feelings and make him feel better, or expression because this kid obviously is fine and has nothing wrong with him and you have to perform a little to make it convincing. Whichever you would rather go with. I'm gonna go okay, here's the thing. Wolf genuinely feels feels for this kid. What happened was traumatic and not everyone goes and finds you know, vampires and whatever the kids were and werewolves and stuff. Hmm? Uh, never mind. I'm not in the room. I, I can't tell you shit. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, so that would be my. Uh, I'm gonna go roll. I'm gonna roll with empathy. Okay, roll with empathy. Presence, empathy, and do I use my uh, da, 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 profession? Yeah, you can add your professional die. Great. And we are looking at a whopping three. Oh, wait, nope, four. Four. You do a damn good job. You want to want to act that out for me? All right. So I was crying. Wolf's gonna reach out and put a hand on his not bandaged hand. Okay. Look, Henry. I'm not gonna tell you what you went through wasn't fucked up. Uh huh. You saw something really scary. Uh huh. And here's what I'm gonna recommend to you. Mm-hmm. Get the fuck out of this shithole town. Go back to... Where are you from? Milwaukee. (laughs) Great. I got buddies in Milwaukee. Go to Milwaukee. I'll write you a letter of recommendation. They make web videos or something. You could be a PA for them. Leave this off your... And just leave this off your fucking resume. Okay, kid? 
<laughs> Lots you'd, of growlers. You'd there. really do that? Of course. Oh my god, thank you. Oh my god, my credits are gonna look so much better in Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I I I'm gonna be in charge of the fucking set in two months. <laughs> that's that's the attitude, kid. You're right. You're right, I'm getting out of this shithole. Yeah, and he, he he's job. he rotates out of bed and he gives you oh. a, a very a very nervous look. He puts his hand up on the railings. He gingerly, gingerly settles himself on his uninjured legs <laughs> and then looks so shocked when he confidently walks to the bathroom, spins around, gives a little gay tuft of hair whistle and goes, you're a miracle worker, Doc. I owe you everything. <laughs> Buckle, can you explain to me what a tuft of hair whistle is? Yes, it please is, do. It is okay. You know, you know, in those DreamWorks old animated movies, like this one princess. Yeah, yeah, that's what that is. What, what is trumbling into town? <laughs> by the way, I don't need this sass from you. <laughs> he's just tr- he's All right. Trumbling. So now that he's t- now that he tells the kids, okay, he's gonna give him a nod, give him a cell phone number, and once he leaves, he closes the door behind him and goes, "God, was I that dumb as a twink?" Good <laughs> Oh. On your way out, he he points to you like very very sort of princely, and he goes, "And best of luck to my worthless replacement." Best of luck, kid. All right, and that'll be that scene. And scene. <laughs> Yay! All right. Yeah, everybody knows that how gays that... roll into town is they tremble. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pope. Was that a was that a red letter media reference? Uh, it was. Okay, just making sure. <clears throat> Driving to the National Park of Manaska, Missouri, or Nebraska. Um, <laughs> yes, on the way out, though, anyone who is walking out of the hospital is welcome to make a perception check if you think your character would be paying attention. Nope, I'm on the bus. Um, I, I'm definitely on, so I'll go ahead and make that yeah, roll. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have a look. Oh, what is that That's Wit's Composure, right? Yeah, Wit's Composure. Well, la di da. Four. All right. Dos equis. Two. All right. Well, if you don't notice anything, um, Mason, you have a sort of sixth sense about things. You use it often to detect things that you can't rationally understand why they draw your eye to them, but they just do. So as you're all walking through the recovery ward to go about your day, out of the corner of your eye, you sort of catch the image or the the face of a woman through the glass window of, of a room into a private section, and something in your brain just goes, hold on a sec. And you turn around and you look, and you recognize her as the woman from the research facility. Oh, shit. Uh... Hey guys, and I'll just kind of wave wave us to a stop. I don't really know what we want to do this, but I'll just point over there, point over at the window behind me. I'm I'm not standing in her line of sight. Should she be conscious? Mm-hmm. Just saying behind me in that room. So whoever wants to look, I'm trying not to be loud. I'm in the bus, so I'm actually not here. Okay, whoever's here, you Who see is me here, just you... for the sake of my understanding. I know. JD is here. I know Wolf and Mason are here. William. Vic or William's Vic, here. Yeah. Yeah. Vi, uh, Vic and Darla are both back on the bus. Okay. All right. So mostly you two, Pope and Michael. Mm-hmm. I, I motion at a uh, patient's room behind me, and I don't say what it is, but I'm being very quiet. Kind of just lean over and look in. <laughs> As stealthily and sneakily as possible. You see Can we Scooby Doo this and all three of us are kind of like. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, I'm down. Um, there's, there's a woman laying. She's perpendicular to you, so you see her in profile uh, with her short cropped black hair and sort of thin bony face. And uh, she has her eyes closed and she's just resting in, in the uh, sort of uh, curtained off back section of a, of a dual recovery room. Who's that? Just turn and look at him like, what? You don't, you don't remember her? She was 
That was one of the hunters from the asylum. Oh, is it? The... Yeah. Um, at that, Wolf just kind of I'm pulls himself I'm... away, puts his hands up like, nope, 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 okay. nope, 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 nope. I'm just going to take a picture of her face and then leave. I'm, I'm satis- sat- satisfied with all this. Okay. You snag a picture of her for posterity, and you are on your way. Uh, uh, does do anyone want to at, wanna make no, an investigation no. check while you're here? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. You don't Not have to wolf. go in. Um, okay. Sure, I am good at that. I'll, I'll, I'll even go in to would, do it. Would you recommend? Okay. Would I'll you recommend to sneak around in there? Would you she recommend an unseen like she's asleep, right? Yeah, she looks asleep. You may want to roll subterfuge just yeah. in case. I want to stealth. <laughs> Can I just stealth? Yeah. Is it like a stealth? Dex well, it's um. Or? It'd be Dex and Subterfuge, I'm okay. pretty sure it's Stealth. Or wait, is Stealth its own? Stealth is its own thing. Yeah. Oh, cool. So yeah, roll your Stealth. With... Oh yeah, they added that. Dexterity, I imagine. Dex. Yeah, with Dex in this case, because you're trying to open a door okay. without making noise. Unseen Sense or Vanilla uh, Investigation? Oh, yeah, your choice. I get to add dice, so I'm going to do Unseen Three. Sense. Three? All right, you, you go into the room, you manage then... to open the door silently... When you open the door, you get to see that the other bed in the room is unoccupied, yeah. so there's no one else to see you, and mm, she does not respond. So yeah, now you can investigate. Well, if he... Just looking around. Uh, John, for your successes, you note down in your, your sort of pocket notebook her name, which is Singer Lutrec. You note down that uh, based on her date of birth, she is 21 <laughs> years old. And that she is in the hospital for internal injuries and blunt force trauma. Two. Two. Just looking around. And sure. And stuff. Um, for two, you find her purse. <laughs> sort of stuck under under the table in, in the room. And a bunch of flowers with her name on them. Look and see if she has anything weird in her purse. Yeah, inside <laughs> her purse, you see the usual, you know, girl purse stuff. But you do find a very strange um, brown notebook that just says FPD on it. Can I? I'm not it. taking it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You uh, write down on your inventory. Yoink. You now have something called the FPD Handbook and Code of Conduct. FPD Handbook and Code of Conduct. You had to like dig oh, around dear. through thirty like like package tampons, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Can I see him snag that? Yes. Well, I, well, actually, I kind of want to keep an eye out. If if he's going in there, after I learn what I learn, I'm going to keep an eye out. Okay. Yeah, you can guard. Nurses and orderlies walk by, but it's uh, no one seems to notice. Okay. And then we should leave. It's visiting hours at the hospital, so it's, like there's our, a lot of people here. On our way out, I'll probably bother JD to be like, hey, what, what'd you find? And there wasn't anything else around, really? No, just that. Okay. Well, not with the yeah. two. Then. <laughs> not with the two. There wasn't anymore. <laughs> well, I can keep look for a second longer. If you want to, just I, I'm just keeping an eye on right like now. Like the little cabinets and stuff. <clears throat> so, do you want to stay longer? <clears throat> is there like, is there like a whole bunch of hustle and bustle outside? Yeah, I mean, it is visiting hours. It's well, still after, a rural town, but people are it's passing. A, it's a pretty small place. But, but yeah, the, the, the nurses and doctors are passing with some how, regularity. How long have we been in there? You've been in there at this point about a minute and a half. <laughs> You'd have to stay a further five minutes to make another investigation call. Yeah. Wolf is just doing that thing where he's like, I am standing outside and I do not want anything bad to happen, mm-hmm. but I am terrified something bad is going to happen, so I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> And, and obviously, to do a further check, you're yep. also risking waking her up again. She'll get another check to notice you. Okay. Um, you know what? Since I can't decide, <laughs> since I can't decide, I'm definitely checking. Yeah. All right. Hey. Make me another subterfuge check, please. Hey, since you don't know what to do, it's like, hey, can you, can you like distract? Some of the nurses, like, go ask some questions, try and find some bullshit person. So we can get a little heat off this room. Get a little people away from this hallway. Uh, Sure. Yeah. You sneak the crap out of her. She does not notice. She's not weak. (laughs) And then another another investigate. Uh, Do I need to make a roll for that at all? Um, 
just for the sake of simplicity with Three. what JD is doing, we won't roleplay through that. But Three. you find the nearby nurses and waylay them. Three this time. Okay. Three. Um, all right. For three, you find her badge tucked in a hidden pocket in the bottom of the uh, purse. Also take. <laughs> Stone cold, JD. Yes. What? Yes. As far as I know, she was trying to kill us. I'm taking all of her stuff. She has <laughs> they, she, they were both actually quite patient with all of us. <laughs> she didn't try to kill me, so. Unfortunately, the two people who she was nice to are not present. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Nobody's going to speak up for her. As far as I know, she was trying to kill us. All right, so uh, she'll just blame it on the hospital staff or something. We're good. Yeah. Are you uh, Are you gonna stay or no, leave? I'm leaving. All right. So you all slip back out of the hospital room and so make your way back like out. A, it's just like a what kind of badge is it? It's a badge. It's very reminiscent of an FBI badge. It just says FPD, and instead of you know blue and white, it's all brown uh, and a brown leather sort of flip <laughs> wallet. Okay. Uh, it has her picture on it. It has a big metal badge seal at the top. It uh, looks very official. And actually, if, if you uh, slip her ID card out, you'll see on the back side is printed a exact duplicate, except it says FBI. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> Not even good people. He told you. <laughs> so you all exit the hospital. Um, you all, I assume, pile back into your vehicles. Yeah, we need, we need. Wolf is thoroughly despised by all the nurses in that hospital now. <laughs> And those of you who wish to can hop into the passenger van and go to the state park and return William. Yeah, and then we need to get going to Kansas. Yes. So uh-huh. you all make the further drive to the state park, back to where you've previously found the werewolves. Uh, William stops you at the line of their territory and uh, sort of smiles and goes, Okay, thanks guys. Um, you know, it was really nice for you to, to ask me to come along with your with your group. And Sure. Uh, you know, it's it sounds like a really good pilgrimage, but I, I need the blessing of the Alpha first, so... Well, we need to leave tonight, so... Oh gosh, that's not a lot of time. <laughs> do you, do you want to call them over here and talk, or do we need oh, to come with you, you know, or... I, you know, let me... I'll just go and talk to them myself. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll have a howl, and I'll let you all know, okay? Can you okay. just wait okay, just like good. 20 minutes? Yeah, sure, we can wait 20 minutes. Yeah. Hey, did, how's the ash on his face? Is it still there? Yeah, it's 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 a little must. I mean, he's not exactly used to having stuff on his face, so he's been touching it. It's a little smeared. <laughs> but give, him it's, a, give him a jar. Clearly a sooty handprint. But this is already promised to somebody okay. in Belize. Okay, all okay. right. Can I? Can I? Hey, can we? Can I just take I, just a little bit? I mean, I I I promised him a full thirty-two ounces. I don't know. Okay, well, he's not even gonna lose a half ounce here. Okay, but I like take, a little I take, baggie. I take off the top and I just dip. I, I just dip. I just fire. dip my fingers in it and I just fix the spots that got messy. He, he he's, he's not discernible it's, from regular. It's ads. reminiscent of of face painting a child. He's sort of sitting there very eagerly, but he's still kind of flinching and like moving around. But then, in the end, it looks quite a bit better. And I just pat my fingers back off in the ash jar and jar. seal it back shut. Okay, <clears throat> and he sort of breathes out. <sighs> okay, I'm going in. You got this, buddy. Go. And then he transforms Ooh. into a full-sized wolf and lopes away. Ugh. Wait, I don't think the ash would have done anything because he's a wolf dad. <laughs> it transformed with no, that. No, I the don't other think, stuff. but his hair is going to push it all out. Yeah, it's pointless. That's that was a like good a point. like a whole $3 hey, dollars but, worth but, of ash so, there. Oh, but, <laughs> put the ash in the jar. But what does he believe? <laughs> but what does he believe, guys? Come uh, on. True. Just, just, ha, ha, we'll leave here in a second. Just everybody, you know, stretch, take a piss, whatever you gotta do. Is what we're yeah. hearing about important on trying to sleep? Yeah, no. you owe me three dollars! <laughs> Literally the least important thing I can think of. Okay, Darla, no I don't. Somebody in this fucking van owes me three dollars! <laughs> I'll buy you some McDonald's, fuck! I don't eat that shit! <laughs> you don't, it's delicious. Okay, uh, can I, take a wash while we're waiting, can I just, just the, call up uh, the Nebraska jar, make Supernatural Agency and see if we can find a buyer that's better than what she found? Yeah, sure, you come up. Yeah, so I'm going I'm to see if we can find a better buyer than okay. what you found. W- whatever price you found, we'll use that as the benchmark. Uh, I was selling them at $30 a jar. There was a bid and war between yeah, two thought, people. Shit, I thought it was like $15 Yeah, ounce. well, that's because <laughs> he doesn't know how to use eBay. Is this canon? Is she getting money for this? 
Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. It was thirty dollars a jar because it got into a bidding war between the Bigfoot Society of North yeah. Carolina. Right. So so that's our bare minimum. We're not going below that. All right. Ring ring ring. Thirty dollars a jar. Middle Nebraska Paranormal Society. Hi, uh, I uh, recently acquired some materials, uh, and I was wondering if you might know somebody who'd be interested in buying, that being Genuine Vampire Ashes. Uh-huh. Uh, and how... <laughs> so, I'm sorry. I, Is this I can't, from yesterday? I can't say anyone's ever called me with that before. Um, how would you go about uh, validating that, that claim, sir? Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, clearly, uh, since oh god, hold on. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Well, I, I think you're gonna have to click. make a persuasion check, a persuasion <laughs> check of some kind here. Okay. Well, I well, well, Miss Anderson, I'm dotting my belief in people. <laughs> Wait, you understand, Miss? Uh, regular ash uh, has a pulpy nature uh, from <laughs> from the wood it's burned across from. And when it's made from a corporeal being or, or something such as a vampire, it uh, tends to lose its structure um, and it becomes much different. Um, and we have the photographic evidence of them burning out of their clothes. So I can send you that picture as well as validation. Uh, two successes. Four successes. She thinks you're full of shit. Okay. All right. So we're we're sticking with our eBay of, of thirty a jar. Just just, just click. We, also, <laughs> yeah, she, we she, also don't have pictures. She actually. I took one. She doesn't even just hang Wait. up on you. She like laughs we in your face and pictures. then hangs just, up on you. Cool. It's all right. Well, the Bigfoot Society of North Carolina isn't quite as discerning. Nebraska. No, no. This is the people that bought it on eBay. Okay, good. The, not just discerning. That's money we need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Then we need to go meet up with our crew and get our paychecks. So we All right, have money. right about that time, uh, William returns to you with his tail literally between his legs. Oh, oh no. And he transforms back into yeah, into right. a person. Okay, bye, 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 William. Let's like turn the bus. <laughs> and starts pulling on his pants and zipping <laughs> them up. And he looks at you and he goes, they, they kicked me out. Because I what? didn't listen to the Alpha. And then I came back and I humiliated him by showing that, that the, the, the vampires was killable and that I killed him. When I came back and showed him what I did, I, I thought they, they'd think I was a strong, mature, tough wolf. A manly, sexy, beautiful, mature male wolf. Hey, <laughs> 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 can I get that on the shirt? But, <laughs> but instead... Instead, they told me I'd shamed all of them with my wild. actions against against the Alpha's word, and and by going against him and by killing the thing that I'd done, become a become a pariah of the clan. Well, can I give him a hug? You can give him a hug. Okay, buddy. Listen, listen. They're all scared shitless of the Alpha, <laughs> and the Alpha's scared shitless of the vampires you killed. You don't need them. I mean, you might need to find a clan someday, but if you want to come with us, buddy, at least for now, we can be that clan. At the top of his lunch, JD is just going to yell, fuck you, pussycats, out the window. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. those guys. They don't High deserve five, you. JD. What are we saying? Fuck yeah, you fuck now? those guys, man. We got us now. Hey, William. Fuck you to the werewolves. Yeah, they're they're real shitty, though. He nods and he says, oh, shit. Okay, you're right. You're right. From this from this day onward, I will be your clan scribe. And he yeah. he bows very properly in front oh, of no. all of you. Oh yeah. Hey, get uh, your hands Wolf's on gonna the lean over voice. to Mason. What's a scribe? I, I'll explain it in a bit. I think I know. No, how I'm it works. gonna. Uh, Darla's gonna pat the seat next to her, and then while still bent over, his head perks up and his eyes get white, and he goes, "Unless unless you already have a scribe, I didn't want to be rude to the scribe." No, we no. don't even know what the hell that is. Get on here. <laughs> you can be our scribe. It's cool. Our, our scribe retired. I did not mean to steal the position of a more senior and honorable Sorry, wolf. Scribe. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, I just, I just, I just, Darla holds up a finger. She goes, "Will, yeah, sweetheart, just get on the bus." <laughs> yes, and he goes, yes, um. <laughs> she, she pats the seat next to him and it's just, I'm going to show you how to use eBay. <laughs> 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 and with that, 
you all roll your way out of the <laughs> shitty little crap hole known as Manaskis, Nebraska. James <laughs> is holding a middle finger out the, out the window, window hoping that a werewolf sees it. Goodbye, Walmart, Tennessee. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> Fuck this town. stops the bus, gets out, pisses on a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Mine now. <laughs> William thinks you're marking your territory and he joins you in solidarity. <laughs> His tail is wagging the whole time. Well, he's, he's a man he's now. A, he's a human right now. <laughs> a, a, yeah. a, a, a little male wiggle wiggle wiggle. Wiggle. <laughs> I thought you all would like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a real adult, mature, <laughs> sexy, <laughs> virile, <laughs> beautiful, <laughs> appreciating, who has, has is his, a tasty okay. snack. You all, you all can report. gather that, that in his clan, old school masculinity is the way. <laughs> okay, it, 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 an important question. Has his recent victory and increasing confidence raised his, his, his scale up from a three to a four, maybe? You know, I'll I'll give you that. He has put his points of experience into his daddy scale role. <laughs> there you go. He just got more chin hair, Great. gradually becoming uh, more attractive. All right, so we are all now driving to Manas or to Kansas City. Kansas, Kansas City. Kansas City. Yeah. So, uh, so Vic wakes up to, uh, <laughs> to to find Will just like sleeping at the foot of his cot. <laughs> oh, cool! We're keeping him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gotta get him a collar from the pound, but I think that he's, got he's all his seventeen. Vaccine. That does not seem appropriate at all. <laughs> it just has all of our names on the back, and like a that's phone also number. really not okay. We, well, we also have we have six bunks, and I mean we're technically fine on that. I guess so. What are we gonna do when we get to the next town? Probably go to sleep somewhere. <laughs> no, I mean like with. Him, I mean, like, aren't we gonna be? We'll just tell him we picked up a PA. Well, apparently, Darla's gonna convince production oh, that it, they have yeah, a new PA. Listen, they're not gonna want to pay him. He's not gonna ask for money. Like, he's just gonna work for food and hang out in our tour bus. They're gonna totally be fine with one, it. That's once, how the film industry works. Once, once again, as long as you, as long as you let that make that fly, I had to deal. Listen, I won't even have to convince production. Oh God, are we gonna need to get him a fake ID? They're gonna. They're not paying him any money. He's not gonna have to fill That's out any tax you. form. Do you do you even know how to fill out a W two? He's asleep. You just said he was asleep. Oh, he's adorable. Listen, that he, boy don't even know he's what he's eBay right is. Now too. So he's curled up and he's got his bushy tail like under under oh, his head. He's running. He's chasing rabbits. Hey, maybe he can just stay as a dog for a while, and we could say that I adopted a dog and he's just my new pet. No, we'll just call him a PA. That sounds easier and probably a little bit more humane. All right. Uh, Wolf <laughs> slides open his little cubby. Guys, let me sleep, please. Slink. <laughs> and he's back to snoring. <laughs> and on that note, you all uh, drive the rest of the way through the night on a very difficult and strenuous drive uh, without any sleep for those of you who are driving. Um, so, JD. Since you and uh, I believe Wolf are the ones with drive. Yes. Yeah, we're basically, basically are you guys off. gonna swap halfway? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna tag team it. Boop. Okay. So you all both get a decent amount of sleep. Not ideal, but you get to sleep, and everyone else gets a full night. Uh, you can all give yourself a willpower back hey. for sleeping, Yay. and you can all downgrade hey. uh, your health by one level. Your uh, damage, I should say. My, my arrow wound. Back up to full HP. Never. I'm still bruised. Damage. <laughs> <laughs> and <clears throat> so you drive through the night, through the sweeping uh, plains of the American Midwest, until you arrive at your next destination. Settled on a parcel of land straddling the Missouri River, there is a town where the citizens of half the city carry Kansas driver's licenses and the citizens of the rest carry Missouri. The town itself seems built entirely on the motivating power of competition. Even back when it was first founded in 1838, the stated mission of it was to compete with the river trade that was supplying the ongoing development of America's western territories. Settled on either side of a river, it became a world of commerce, which housed rivalries that last. And as you all now know, in the world of the occult, 
rivalries quickly become trenches. You will find yourselves cresting a hill at the first light of dawn, in your tour bus, rolling into an active, modern city littered with red brick remnants of an industrious past. Welcome to Kansas City. The hometown of Mason. <laughs> oh. 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 And none of us would know that, would we? And none Unless you that. No. Local boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of rocking uncomfortably in whatever I'm sitting in. <laughs> so you These roll up. Boning grounds. And <laughs> Mason, roll me a high low, please. You want me to call it? Yeah, call it, please. Hi. And God bless America, you're coming in on the Kansas side. <laughs> so you all uh, roll up. You do not have a hotel, so um, I suppose one of you finds an RV park or something that you yeah. can rent for the night. I'm not going to deduct you points or anything. You find a place to set up the bus. It's... The early morning, so light is coming in through the windows, um, and all of you who did sleep through the night uh, are sort of brought up gradually late in the morning as you finish your rest. You have until tomorrow evening to get to your next shoot in Chicago, and you all know that that is roughly mm -hmm. one day's drive. So you could continue from here, or you could spend the day and then like resting up and then leave tomorrow morning. Yes. I thought we were shooting in Kansas City. Uh, we're just you, stopping in. You're just then, stopping in. Then going up to Chicago. Right. I'm uh, finding a hat. Wolf <laughs> holds up a flyer for Worlds of Fun. <laughs> With the biggest grin he can muster. <laughs> eh? Eh? Vic is, uh, Vic is looking up things to do in Kansas City. What are you doing that for? I found something. It's a theme park. I've it's actually been to Worlds of Fun. It's actually a lot of fun. I've it is as it. described. Is Worlds of Fun I've, I've fun? I've been it to Worlds of Fun too, of fun. and it was yeah. okay. And of course, William sits up so, and, and wags his tail and then transforms into a human in the same position and goes, oh my gosh, what is that? Okay, so, Wolf, you'll have a good time. Vic, go get some Q. I'm going to stay on the bus. I have a lot of stuff to read. And then I need to go talk to Charlie. Yeah. I'll see you guys when we leave. Now I'm just going to I'm just going to get some extra shut eye in. All right. He says as he goes to a uh, one of the curtained off beds and starts to read the FPD handbook. All right. Okay. Uh, what day of the week is it? Oh, did you tell us about that? <laughs> Good question. All right. So, um yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna I have go. a schedule, thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go hop in the RV and talk to Charlie for Not a while. Yet. <laughs> she wants uh, to know what's in it first. It is a Wednesday. Okay. Well, apparently they have a first Friday that's very nice, but it's Wednesday. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's uh you know, I've always wanted to go to Worlds of Fun. Let's do it. Hell yeah. That's okay, fine. That's three, I guess. Mm. All right, I'll, I'll go. use my ill-gotten gains to pay for our trip. <laughs> uh, so I also don't. Yeah, I also don't want to pay to go in. <laughs> Listen, I, I just made us a decent chunk of change with our vampire. You made ninety dust. bucks. <laughs> ninety bucks can is like one hour of theme park time. It's great. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, so Darla pays your way, and all of you uh, get into the world's oh, fun. Thing JD, JD staying in the bus, except right. for JD. Of it's, it's just me, Wolf, and Will. Okay, so what about Vic? Hold on, no, I'm coming. Okay, okay, Vic, okay. Vic seemed very intrigued. <laughs> so you all go to World's Fun. Uh, you you get in. First of all, it's a place with a lot of people. Is Vic recognized? That's a really good question. Oh my god! Let's oh wait, is dice. Wolf recognized? God, another. <laughs> Is, oh, <laughs> and if so, yeah, what's happening to your growler right now, buddy? Yeah, what is happening? Because I got fame, too, and I'm actually in a populate area for the first time this campaign. <laughs> He's going to go get himself an amusement ride. Jesus. Your phone's just constantly vibrating. Just everybody. So, Vic, you get recognized by a trio of 30-something uh, women who at one time might have been adoring teenage fans. <laughs> of they, me as a, uh, my childhood of, acting? Uh, yes, of, of you as a as a teen sort of Disney Channel actor. He's He's got, like, <laughs> shades on and pretends like, oh, you found me. 
they're, they're wheeling, God. they're wheeling a, a Junior, little he might literally throw up. strollers with their kids that are all squealing <laughs> and, and asking mom why they're standing still. And they're just like, oh my gosh, you're Vic Cooper. Oh, uh, yeah. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? One of them is clearly the super fan who then alerted the other two <laughs> friends. Uh, oh, good lord. And they spend a, a really kind of awkward amount of time just reminiscing about the good old days, which don't really involve you that much, but um, you're I used think to it. Darla I sort think of swoops in to save him. He's like, hey, honey, I want ice cream. It's like, oh, well, yeah, lady needs what she needs. Sorry, ladies. You have a girlfriend? Oh my gosh, congratulations. I drape myself on him. Yes. We've been together for eight years. It's, it's you know, we're just coming here. And two months. Yeah, for a, an anniversary. We met over there. And when they when they look where he's pointing, then they start to leave. <laughs> <laughs> it's an alien spaceship ride. Like, <laughs> Tentacle monster. As you walk away, you hear the ringleader whispering to her friend, Oh my gosh, they're so cute together. And the other one's like, Oh, you're so right. And she has such a good butt. I do. Oh, I'm so I jealous. Ship it, question mark? <laughs> I'm and so then, jealous. I, I whisper into Vic's ear, you owe me $30. <laughs> I will do no such thing. Okay, but ice cream. Meanwhile, Fair enough. <laughs> meanwhile, at the cotton candy booth, Wolf, you are recognized. Oh, dear. You are recognized by a large man in a biker jacket with a with a troop of young children uh, sort of biting at his ankles. His daddy scale is six. <laughs> wow. And uh, he sort of, he, he looks up at you with his hands stuck in his belt loops. And the only thing that really gives it away is that his eyes kind of widen and then they drop a little. And then he changes his stance so that his like shoulders are shown off just a little bit more. And he goes... Hey, are you, are you the wolf man? No. <laughs> oh my god, was that god. your stage name? Oh my god, please let that be true. It oh my is, god. Is William with me? Oh my god. <laughs> um, yeah. Or is William like, on a roller coaster? I'm going to say, I'm going to say no. <laughs> no, he's not with you. Oh, because okay. he could say, oh no, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So, Wolf, uh, take a bite out of his cotton candy, kind of lowers it a bit. Uh, <clears throat> haven't heard that name since, uh, the Bush administration. <laughs> well, I never forget. How are you for- doing? And he goes, well, what can I say? I mean, I I never forget a Bush administration like yours. <laughs> God. Uh. Wolf is trying so hard to play it cool. Oh, my uh, God. I pass it over well, um, <laughs> I'm glad you <laughs> no, know no, no, someone no. appreciates my work. <laughs> yeah, well, always uh, happy to be a fan. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's uh, I I don't want to make it weird, but uh, yeah, you, you you did you did good work back in the day. Mm. They don't make them like they used to. Well, I I do good work nowadays too. Oh, do you? What do you do? Is it is it is it a, a pay per view or? Uh, it's it more matters. of an on-demand thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, <laughs> oh my god. All right, Stephen, I need I need to pause. Just ask where where do you want this to go? This is good analogy uh, for let's working keep, as a show. Let's not get ourselves past the explicit rating on iTunes. But you guys bang in the bathroom. Let's just right? like well, well, he's got so a Wolf's just gonna give him, him a wink. Yeah. He's got a gaggle gonna, of I'm gonna kill the scene him. right now. Wolf gives him a wink. See you around. And then he's going to go to uh, whatever ride William's on. He's going to go to the exit and just be like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. I can't believe that happened. It's fucking in here. Oh, my God. Because this is this past coming back to haunt him. I was about to have Vic haunt come him. up and drag him away, much like how Darla dragged him away previously. <laughs> you still can. Do you so, know that he's gay? He talked about having a dick to suck. He yeah. likes dudes. Wolf is not shy about being gay. He's very yeah. open about it. No, he's not. Yeah, I think he's been pretty clear with everybody. Yeah. Uh, certainly everyone at the table well, we, knows. All, all, well, all he said, actually, is that he'd suck a dick. 
And he and he could just be open to it. The that could mean I anything. Have I have. <laughs> well, I mean, Michael, I believe what I actually said was, "Listen, dude, I just need weed and a dick to suck." That's so. true. That's true. That's fair. <laughs> that's that fair. means at least that's he's fair. at the very least bisexual. Yes. Yes. And dad, please don't listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad isn't going to listen. <laughs> My so. mom will love it. We will leave uh, <laughs> that sure? troop yeah. of characters at the amusement park having a lovely day. And being recognized. <laughs> uh, back on the tour bus, JD, you are reading through this n- very the strange FPD. FPD handbook. It's written in a very strange sort of coded language. Not in the sense that it's a literal cipher, but that all the words don't seem to mean what they're supposed to mean to normal people. They're in very strange phrasings, mm. and they reference all kinds of other rules and texts that you don't know. And events and codenamed, you know, uh, locations that you don't know. Okay. But what you can gather is that this is the handbook to some kind of hunting organization. Um, and what you gather from mostly that, that you can understand is there's a section on asset management. And it talks about the, the proper transport management and uh, disposal of uh, subjects and uh, testing equipment and that stuff really that section rings a bell to you it seems yeah. like it's talking about the facilities that you guys found and the possibility that there are lots of other facilities like that that this organization in some ways involved with or at least that an agent of this organization would need a, a rule book for okay so you gather that in the time that you are reading you can continue to go and look back at that book later As you start to learn more, you'll learn more from it. But at this time, that's the only section that really makes any sense Mm. to you. Okay. And then, on the other hand, we have Mason. What would you like to do, Mason? I'm going to walk up to wherever we have the RV parked and just just do a a knock on the door and then just twist the door open and step on in. I need to have a chat with Charlie. Okay. So, uh, Charlie has set up at the same RV park. There's really only one that's in a convenient place. So he goes and follows you in. He sits down, spreads his legs, you know, wide, puts his hands clasped in the middle, and he's like, all right, champ, let's talk. All right. I kind of shakily put my glasses on, and I try and rest my hands on the table. Okay. The last 48 hours. Um, or a lot more than I expected. Uh, so, you you know what happened after we got out of the asylum, but uh, the vampires followed us, and they they came after JD, and they came after you, and we couldn't get the werewolves to help, except for the one. And I honestly don't know how I got that shit to work as much as it did. And I honestly don't know how you're sitting across from me right now. And I'm not ready to let somebody else I give even two shits about die again. So I'm begging you, Charlie. I know there's things you're not supposed to talk to me about as a human. I I just need to know a little bit more about the things I don't know. If you can't tell me about werewolves, Whatever. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. But I need to know more. I need to know what's beyond this veil. Please. These people could die. They're stuck with me now. We're all stuck in this world together. I was hoping it'd be just me and you. I could learn stuff. We'd eventually solve my problem. My family'd be better. But it's not going to be that easy anymore. Listen, man. I'm sorry. You know, uh, those vampires had powers I never run into before, and I, I told you the first time, you know, they're all different. You can't treat one like the other because, you know, some of them do stuff that you ain't never seen before, and that's just something they're able to do. And, and you know, it might be better for you to have some other humans got your back. I sure, I sure miss having my clan, you know. It's not easy being a lone wolf. Well, you I mean, I got you, but, you know, we're both running from the same trouble. And it's going to catch us one day. 
Y'all know that. We're in that neck of the woods anyways. Matter of fact, while we're here, you might might want to go and tell your dad you're still living. I mean, I'm sure he'd chase your trail, but... I don't Listen, know your family's powerful. You're going to need help. I know you don't want to talk to him, and I know you probably got baggage I ain't never heard of, but we're here, right? I told you all I know already. Well, you know, I I, got, I was brought up telling stories and legends about my clan. I can't tell you about anybody else's. Right. I can't tell you about any kind of vampires. Yeah. I, I can tell you what I heard about spirits. That'll probably be pretty yeah. accurate, but... You know, uh, not everything under the sun is our purview. Charlie, that I believe you. Well, much as it pains me, I think I'll take your advice. I mean, we scraped by on the skin of our teeth. The only thing that got us through that was the sun. And we could have screwed that up, too. Just, if you can think of anybody... In this world we live in now, that might know that I could talk to, maybe do them some favors. I just I need to know more. I've been writing down everything I learn, but you know I'd rather know it in advance. If there's anybody I can talk to, I can go try and rustle up some favors for. All right, I'll I'll look into my contacts. I'll sure. I'll do what I can for you, man, because we're in this together. All right, mm. and uh, he sort of. I'm going to give Charlie a very shaky hug and then turn to leave. He he stands up shaky because of his knee, uh, but he puts a hand on the back of your neck and he squeezes real tight. And he says, listen, we got through the long night. Mm. And this ain't nothing we ain't faced already. No. All righty? Yeah. All right. And Go get him, Tiger. As I leave, I forcibly straighten out my body. And just walk out, maybe stiffly, but just, I'm not shaking anymore. I won't let myself shake anymore. And then I go over, and I find my way to the van so I can wait for everybody to get back. Cool. Uh, Go ahead and take a willpower point for that conversation with your touchstone. All right. How how many hours do you guys think we would be staying at World's Fun? Like, when do we need to leave? I'm going to eat some cold pizza, because we definitely have pizza left over. (laughs) I uh, I figure you all will be back in the mid-afternoon, probably. Yeah, let's do that. I imagine that we're... You know, it's bit summer. It's yeah. late summer. It's been sunny. It's been hot. You all yeah. probably are done by the mid afternoon. Okay. So, at which at at which point? Uh... Oh wait, no, never mind. I thought I had an idea, but it was bad. So I um I pushed the door open to the RV uh, or our, our tour van uh, with my some of my hip, and I've got like a stuffed bear. Under one hand and a stuffed turtle under the other one. <laughs> and I throw them in my bunk. Okay. <laughs> and I lay down with them. Just for my own knowledge, let's claim some bunks for continuity here. So oh, who wants right. to be in the back of the van? Please. Yep. Yeah, I'll be in the back. Oh. All right. So Mason, I'm putting you on the mm-hmm. bottom of bunk of the back. Okay. And Darla, do you do you prefer top or bottom bunks? Uh, top. All right. So <laughs> I'm going to put you in the bunk over Mason. Bunk buddies! Mm. Uh, Vic, top or bottom? Actually, is there a more secluded area to sleep? We know. Yeah, the... <laughs> Why'd you phrase it like that? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy! There, there is the, the double set of bunks on the outside, um, the the top mm-hmm. bunk of which uh, William has claimed for himself. And then, but, so in and the then day, JD's in the bottom of that one. Is, is JD claimed right that? Because in in the daytime it's more exposed, but in nighttime it's it's actually more private because there's more people in the back room. Gotcha. Uh, then he would take that one. Uh, and as for top or bottom, mm-hmm. uh, top is high, bottom is low. Looks like Vic is. All right. Bottom. So then, um, JD, since you already claimed one, we'll put you in the top bunk of okay. that one. <laughs> And then we'll move William to the back room. And Wolf doesn't really care. He'll just take whatever. So So then Wolf ends up on the bottom bunk in the room, and William ends up on the top. All right, cool. Yep. Everybody has sleeping arrangements. A little tedious, tedious, but it's better for continuity. So yes. There you go. He's my favorite philosopher. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> yes, the great Greek hero, T. So, yes, yeah, Darla, uh, in, Darla finds you sitting tensely in the tour bus, walks straight past you with some giant stuffed animals and throws them on her bunk uh, in the back. And then she, uh, wait, are you sitting on your bed or are you, you sitting in the front of the RV? Um, I'm going to be sitting on my bed. I'm just waiting for you guys to get um, back. So she she sort of sort of flounces by you. <laughs> she ignores you. She climbs up the the the. the the steps to get to her bunk. She throws them on. She's gone for like a second before she sort of pokes her head out from the top bunk. It's like, hey, hey, you, you, you doing okay? Yeah, I'm fine now. But I need to go talk to somebody since we're in Kansas City. So what? What kind of somebody? Family. Wait, uh, are you from here? Yep. Hey, why didn't you say something? Are you, do you need to visit somebody? Did your yeah? I need to go. I need to go dredge up some memories. So, um, and now that you guys are back, you know where I'm at. Um, but no, that I'm that's gonna... not. What do you mean? Where are you going? Just so you know, if you disappear somewhere. Yeah. So if you if you disappear somewhere, we know where you're at. Because, you know, I, you know, I'm not entirely convinced. She crawls down the stairs. Uh, I'm not entirely convinced that, that, you know, those vampires aren't going to have some friends that aren't going to try and hunt us down or whatever. I'll, I'll be safe. Um, if, if, it, if it eases your worries, I'll be at this address. And then I just, now that I've seen somebody and I've given myself a whereabouts, I'm going to hop out and... Just make my way over to the the lone van we've been using. Hey, don't get killed or you know, touched inappropriately by strangers. Anyway, bye. I can promise one of those things. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go. <laughs> Thank you, say, Darla. I'm going to go ahead and say that this whole time, uh, Vic and JD have been uh, have been looking at the the picture that that gets taken at the top of the uh, of the log. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and it's so, and just like they're they're both like taking turns doodling weird things on. I, I feel like this photo is like Darla's yeah. like pushing Vic almost out of the yeah. ride. And Vic <laughs> is getting like this face full of of dirty uh, fl- log flume water. Yeah, and Darla's like pushing him into it. <laughs> if I yeah, if I see any of you guys on the way out of the tour bus, I'll just give you little little salutes, little little head nods, and oh, I'm just yeah, later. I don't have anything to say. I'm just going. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and draw another dick <laughs> on Darla's. I, I make the entire head. log a penis. <laughs> <laughs> all right, your turn. <laughs> oh my god, it's so much better now. <laughs> now you're all writing a dick. <laughs> uh, you all notice the, uh, the in the kitchenette there is a, a sort of tall, compact refrigerator. And someone in the production has provided you some magnets, so you all can mount it in a place of honor. Aww. <laughs> I, I, I hope they're the one to spell out words. <laughs> I, hope, I hope somebody makes fan art of this. And then, because sure, I would have spelled sure, out it's, it's an mountain. alphabet. Dick that would be, would be Mason, Darla, Wolf, and William. <laughs> right. All on a penis plate. <laughs> Right, uh, those little word magnets. It's they're at some point they're rearranged to right in the big dick at the big dick mountain dick dick dick. <laughs> That's in fact on a we, post-it note. We have a lot of specific letters. <laughs> we do a lot of D's. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's that's good. Uh, the the night gets dark. Um, it gets quite late. Ma- no sign of Mason. Uh. Darla, do you tell anyone where he is, or how late are you talking? About nine o'clock. <clears throat> he he left at around five thirty. Do I have his his cell phone number? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You all have we, your. We, own. We've traded that. You, you all have everyone's um, cell phone. I'm gonna first. I'm gonna I'm gonna text him and say, "Hey, you plan on coming back tonight?" Uh, he does mm-hmm. not respond. Um. Yeah, we need we need to get a move on. And then I. I'm sure I texted I'm again. Hey, I'm just checking in. I just want to make sure you're okay. Will you just will you just call me? No response. Well, so then, let's go to Mason. I like the idea that these were all texts sent from different places. <laughs> so at one point we're in the van, and then another point it we're like at a at a, at a come and go, <laughs> <laughs> or something. 
I are we still? I, I imagine we're still parked in, in Kansas City because I would want to. He yeah. took the van with him, so now the only way you guys can get around is if you move the tour bus. Which mm-hmm. now that you're in the city, is kind of a pain in the ass. So I imagine we're probably waiting for him to get back because we don't want to leave without one, oh. of our, one of our people. We're still just hanging out in a theme park parking lot. <laughs> hey, it's not like people don't park there. Well, you're you're in RVs. an RV park. Yeah. You took the the yeah. van back, which yeah. is why he had to wait Maybe for you guys to want come back. Pass oh. the time. You can go bother Charlie. Um, <laughs> Charlie, we're bored. <laughs> Entertain us, Charlie. Charlie, we In rock Char- is RV. Charlie. <laughs> In character knowledge, Charlie loves to tell a story. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So you all don't go after him. What? No, I. Mm. I, uh, I when he doesn't him. respond to my second text message, I, I, I give him a call. And does he not pick that call mm. up? It's a uh, fast busy. Like it doesn't really ring all the way. It just got, cuts out. Okay, so, so he's I, alive, maybe. I um I kind of sit up from my I'm assuming uh, we're all hanging out in the front of the RV. Mm. Yeah, I'm up in my bed. Well, I sit up from my bed and I go, uh, "Hey guys, I'm reading the FPD." Yeah, <laughs> guys, what? Uh, you know, Mason's been gone a real long time, and he said he was gonna go visit his his family. Um, because apparently he's from here and he didn't tell anybody, yeah. but that's neither here nor there. But He's probably busy with his folks. Yeah, but no, but he's not. He's not. Soon, he's not answering my text messages, and I'm. I'm start. Honestly, I'm getting a little bit worried because he's never. I mean, I've only texted him a handful of times, but he's usually been pretty. Do uh, you want us to text bomb him? No, no. That's if he's not answering my text messages, he's probably not going to answer your text <laughs> he messages. Sends, <laughs> JD sends a text instantly. Hey, 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 hey. Jesus hey, fucking hey, Christ! Hey. <laughs> and just start sending him I'm, just I'm random not, you don't know pictures. I'm doing this. <laughs> But anyway, maybe, I mean, I I made him write down his address for me because I was worried that the vampire would come, gonna come and get him like they did JD and then spared him away and then we're never going to see him again. Did you call him? Yeah, I just called him. It didn't pick up. It said it was busy. But why would his phone be busy if he's with his family? See, that's starting to spook me a little bit. They're probably doing something. Maybe they went mini golfing. Well, oh, would, guys, we should go mini golfing. It would make me feel a little bit better if maybe we, you know, we got in the... We we drove by the address that he gave me just just to poke our heads in and maybe just sort of like get mm, his okay. ass moving, you know. JD swings down from the buggy. He's like, "Give me the address." Oh, <laughs> like, <thank you. laughs> just I know I know that sounds stupid, but I'm a, you know I don't want him to get eaten <clears throat> by a vampire and then we have to get a new the cameraman because he's the only guy that knows how to like capture my face <laughs> in its full glory, you know. Gets the bus started. That's the only reason because Wolf is sleeping like a babe. All right, so uh, you all start up the van. Drive across town, go to this address, and it's a little tricky, you get kind of lost, it's kind of out in the boonies, and uh, you're starting to think that that this is some kind of weird ramshackle place, when you turn a corner and instead see a very stately, large ranch complex, with a, a large oak archway over the drive, and... Uh, as you drive under it and sort of drive onto the property, you're greeted with a very large and very expensive looking uh, log style house with rock accents and a sort of babbling like fountain over the front, white picket fences. It's all a big production. Holy shit. You said this was JD's family. I mean, you said this was Mason's family. Yeah, that's what he told me. Oh my God, he, he said so much money. <laughs> Loaded. He's loaded. Mason is rich. I like. I like grab JD's shoulder and I like massage them. He's loaded. <laughs> shrugs it off. <laughs> Definitely shrugs it off. He's like, oh my. So with that, we'll cut back several hours Just in time. The idea of money to, <laughs> to that round up. To Mason himself arriving at his family home. Oh. I'm just gonna pull up in the drive and sit for a second. Just going to kind of pull the keys out, contemplate, look at them for a second, and then swing the door open and step on out. If I don't see anybody, I'm going to trudge my way up to the door and hesitate at the button for a good long while. I'm crossing a threshold again, and I press. There's that awkward pause. It's nighttime. You can't really see lights on. You're not sure if anyone's even home. And then from deep in the house, a, a dim light glows and it 
gets brighter and closer as the person turns on more lights. The lights around you on the porch almost blind you as they click, click on. And then the door opens, and it's your family butler, Wilson. I'll lean forward a bit and just take off the hat I grabbed and be feeding him Wilson. Oh my goodness, get inside. And he pushes you inside, covers the back of your head with his hand in his arm, looks around the, the field outside the house, slams the door closed, and escorts you deeper into the house. It's, as you remember it, Richly decorated, but with very traditional wood, plain wood decor, and large family oil portraits of your great grandfather and your great grandmother and their family all together. All the faces of all the people whose stories you grew up with as a child, the legends that you were taught to live up to. And he leads you to a room which is very intimidating to you. You recognize where you're being led almost on instinct as he leads you to the library and opens the door and he leaves you outside for a moment as is customary to announce you and when he comes back and opens the door and guides you inside you're greeted with the sight of a large stately man who's dressed in a in a white dress shirt with the top few buttons undone and a waistcoat He's uh, balding on top, and, and he's got sort of graying hair at the sides, and the sort of wise, tired eyes of a man who has spent many years dealing with many people. He takes a very long sip from a tumbler of an orange liquor, looks up at you, and he goes, Mason, my son, welcome home. And that's where we'll end our session. No, what? <laughs> what is your dad? What? <laughs> Are you a professional monster killers or is he just fuck off rich? Yes. <laughs> you have a butler. Your dad is Mr. Wilson. Monopoly. <laughs> does it, does, I, I, I need to do this for money, Mason says. <laughs> I need all this money, Mason says. Master Mason, welcome home. Welcome home. Yeah. Yeah. She's and like, thank you, sorry, Wilson. this is my emergency black card. <laughs> come in, come in, you must be so tired from walking amongst the poor. How come many of us will spend money on anything? <laughs> <sighs> Exciting times in the tour bus. <laughs> Uncanny Valley Cancer Cell is created and produced by Buckle Nagel and Stephen Pope. The players are Garrett Schmigel as Vic, Deanna Venable as Darla, Michael Morris as JD, Stephen Pope as James Wolfe, and John Tompkins as Mason, with Buckle Nagel running the game. Hunter the Vigil 2nd Edition is produced and published by Onyx Path Publishing. Find us online at Uncanny Show on Twitter and www.uncannyvalleyshow.com. Make sure you check out Wild Cards, Experience Pointers, and other Saving Throw Show productions on the Saving Throw Network. And hey, have a good night.